you know, I, I've told a couple of people throughout the course of this week, I think seeding was um, pointless this week. I think you can flip a coin, the, the parity with the league, you know, top to bottom. Um, you know, for, Devin, or for Denver to be a seven seed, you know, is quite remarkable, especially the way they've been playing lately. Um, but very proud of our guys. You know, I think this is, again, a microcosm of our year. Uh, we didn't play very well. Uh, I thought our body and ball movement, you know, in the first half wasn't very good. Um, but we made some adjustments both offensively and defensively, and we're able to find a way. But very, very pleased with, you know, uh, you know us to hold Denver one for 15 from three um, and, and, you know, 23 points in the, first, uh, in the second half, 27 in the second. So real credit to our guys. They really locked in, executed game plan against a very tough offensive team. Questions for the student athletes. If you could raise your hand. Name and affiliation, first time around, please. Uh, Jeff Kopak from Forum and Fargo. AJ, uh, uh, aggressive to the basket. Uh, was that the plan for you, or how did that come You know, they were pretty high pressure. They're, they were more uh, high pressure than usual. And, you know, I just felt like I could uh, take those guys off the bounce. And, uh, you know, they were hugging LA and Paul on the wing. So I got some pretty easy lanes to the basket. And, uh, you know, fortunately, I was able to put it in the basket tonight. Yeah, and, you know, it's fun to play in the postseason. You know, that's every every kid's dream is, you know, get into the tournament games. And, you know, it's one of those times where you have to step up and uh, play your best because, you know, every every team is going to be playing hard. And, you know, Denver went out there and competed hard. And, you know, they gave us a, gave us a run for our money again for the third time this year. And, you know, it's just one of those games where you have to step up your game. In the back. You know, it helped a lot. Those guys last year were, uh, you know, tremendous to learn from. You had Taylor Braun, the Summit League Player of the Year. You had Lawrence Alexander, the Summit League Player of the Year this year. Marshall Bjorklund, Trayvon Wright, all those guys. You know, those guys have competed in the Summit League for, you know, four years, five years, some of them. And, you know, those guys were one of uh, I give those guys a lot of credit for where I'm at today. Over here. Um, you sure it's 0 for 5? Uh, 1 for 5, maybe? Uh, but um, honestly, you know, I just got to get comfortable getting the rhythm. Um, next game, uh, my teammates going to do a tremendous job getting the ball, like always. But um, uh, I have confidence. They have, they have confidence. Uh, the coaches have confidence. Uh, I just got to uh, step up and knock it down. Uh, unfortunately, one of them going to fall. And uh, like I always tell Wes, I'll take one to start a fire. So, you know, I'm just waiting for that one to fall. Right here, third row. Uh, that's the one thing that we did. We just attacked. We feel like um, in the first half we kind of settled for jump shots and uh, yeah, it's kind of settled for jump shots and really didn't attack. And uh, that's one thing they wanted wanted us to do in the second half was um, try to uh, get some cheap fouls, get in bonus, and uh, most importantly attack. And that's what we did. You know, um, he said get in there, play off two feet, and we got the results we wanted. You know, it's a nice place to play. You know, it's uh, it's probably one of the nicest places we've played all year, and you know, it's good atmosphere. There was quite a few fans here, and uh, you know, uh, it was uh, it was a good environment. Lawrence, you want to add anything to that? Um, pretty much what AJ said. You know, um, kind of remind me a little bit of Spokane, but just a little bit smaller. But um, you know, it's a great environment. Uh, it's gonna be a great crowd no matter who plays, just because it's a new building. And uh, but like AJ said, you know, it's a great environment. Other questions for the student athletes? We've got time for a couple more right over here. Uh, Big Coast Sports Network, Ryan Shaw. Guys, is it going to be nice to have them find the next day? Does that make a big, sorry, the lights went out. Is it going to be nice to have an extra day to get your legs just because you kind of have to grind this one out tonight? Oh, definitely. It's going to be nice to have the day off tomorrow. Uh, you know, sit back and uh, somewhat relax. Uh, come to the game, watch out who we play uh, t uh, mo on Monday. But uh, most importantly, that was one of our goals to be. Um, first or second seed so we can have the day off and relax and uh, get our legs back and be ready to fight on Monday. I think we had one right here, black shirt. Cool, cool, and as you start from LA, AJ, what kind of impact does Corey Brown have when he's able to stay on the court and kind of be that spark of energy? 
He make a huge impact. Um, you know, it's a difference when he's on the floor and when he's not. You know, uh, Corey's always been the energy guy since I've been here. You know, um, whenever you need a, a spark or a big play, he was always the type of guy to make it. So you know, I always love him when he's on the court and hate him when he's not. But uh, like I said before, he's um, definitely one of the key guys on his team. And uh, whenever you need a big spark, he's always the guy to come through for us. We can take one more. Did you have one right here in the third row? Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, AJ, how important was it to be <coughs> Yeah, you know, it was weird being out there. He was only out for, what, five minutes, but it felt like he was, uh, you know, gone for half the game. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things where we had to pick him up. He's been picking us up all year, and, you know, we, we finally had an opportunity to pick him up. And, uh, you know, it's really important to maintain a lead when you're leading scorers on the bench. And when he can come back and give us a spark offensively, you know, it just pushes us to the finish line. One more for the student athletes, if we have one. OK, thanks, guys. We'll go ahead and excuse you guys back to the locker room. And we'll continue <laughs> with some questions for Coach. Right, right here. Coach, talk about AJ and Paul and I, two freshmen that played huge minutes with you know, AJ and Corey and Paul trouble. They really stepped up big for you. Yeah, I, I don't think we can talk enough about AJ Jacobson and the year he's had. You know, he starts the year, you know, obviously against two really good opponents, but one for 19 at Texas, at Iowa. He goes through that stretch, uh, you know, where he's out five or six games. And, and the mental toughness mm -hmm. that that takes to respond from all those things, um, I just don't think we can measure that. And, and then um, the kid just relishes in the moment. And, you know, for him to be a freshman and, and deliver like that, especially when we needed him, when, when we had Corey was out, L.A. was out, uh, obviously shots weren't falling, but, you know, he found a different way to be successful successful and, and, and we needed it. We have one back here. Yeah, Dave, I just was wondering, did, did you have to change or adjust how you were going to do something in both offense and offense with the defense? Like, because of how the game was called, I mean, there were so many fouls called, so many stops just playing, you could take it really get the rhythm and see what like offense Yeah, I mean, I think that worked in our benefit a little bit, especially in the second half when we were more aggressive and attacking and getting down the hill. And, and we racked up, you know, got, got racked up into the bonus pretty quick, although we didn't make any free throws or, you know, uh, we, we missed plenty. Um, you know, and, and that's, you know, that's a credit to our guys. And, and it's also, uh, you know, so, sometimes you just got to adjust on the fly a little bit. And our, our guys did a pretty good job of that. And, uh, you know, Chris Kading doesn't get enough, you know, credit for what he does defensively. And he guarded multiple guys that can do multiple things. I thought he was real big for us tonight. Let's go second row here. Then. Joel Sipper buys an information network. How big was Dexter tonight, considering that when Corey got into foul trouble? Yeah, I did, you know, Dex came in, and I think Dex was all amped up in the moment. And, and, you know, I took him out real quick and just, you know, hey, you got that out of your, your system a little bit. And he settled back in and, and just made some big, big plays, had a big block there. Um, and, you know, we basically only play seven guys, and so we need everybody. And, and Dex was a part of that tonight. Jeff, second row. Yeah, you know, I just went right at our guys in the huddle. There's been plenty of times this year, obviously, that 12's picked up picked us up. There's a reason he's player of the year in this league. And it was time for some other guys to step up. And, uh, you know, AJ, I thought AJ was tremendous. Uh, you know, Paul was good. You know, Paul's just a guy that, I mean, he plays 31 minutes. You know, his stats don't just jump out at you. Uh, but to have him out there in, in a game of this magnitude is a real credit to him as well. A couple more questions for Coach. Right here. Coach, what did you guys do in the second? Well, I just, you know, really challenged our guys. I didn't think we were, for whatever, we were just really stagnant. We weren't moving. And we, we, we made a couple tweaks here or there on, on how we were going to get some movement. But it's it just our guys, you know, locking in, executing, and un understanding what we needed to do. And then, you know, like I talked about, you know, us getting downhill a couple times, getting to the bonus, they see that success, and they keep going at it. One right here. How's Corey feeling? You know, Corey's... Corey's going to feel you know, as good as possible here the rest of the way. Um, you can see there's still kind of a hitch or a limp. And I threatened him. I told him the other day, if, he, if I see a limp, I'm going to you know, decrease his minutes by 30 seconds every time. But we all know that's not going to happen. And um, you know, if there's one silver lining in him falling out and only playing 19 minutes, is maybe he you know, uh, you know, didn't tweak it anymore. And we have a day off tomorrow, which would be great. But um, you know, it's March. Everybody's got bumps, bruises, tweaks. And, and we got to get through it. Last question right here. Just holding one of the top three point shooting teams in the country to one for 15. I know controlled closeouts has kind of been your message here in the last couple of weeks. Do you feel like you're getting to that point now or you defensively locking 
Yeah, controlling closeouts isn't our key against them. You know, the way that the way the way you shoot it, you know, you got to close out a little bit tighter. And yeah, th th that's where I was very, you know, very pleased for us to, um, you know, hold them to one for 15 and you know just under 36 percent is you know pretty remarkable. And uh, you know we challenged our guys, you know, early em embrace it. You know, this this is it's tough to prepare for. It's not the most fun and exciting. You know, uh, th you know, thing to go through both offensively and defensively. But guess what? It is what's in front of us. And and I thought our guys did a good job of embracing it and accepting the challenge and then executing it.